Hello and welcome to another great webinar from CPA Academy. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Autumn and I'll be your moderator for today's webinar on Mastering Month End Close, How AI Delivers Continuous Reconciliation. Before we get started, I want to go through some housekeeping items and do some technical checks to make sure everything is working. First, if y'all don't mind going to the questions tab on your control panel and letting me know that you can hear my voice, see the title slide, and see our wonderful presenter, Tom Porterfield. Feel free to also let me know where you're calling in from. I do enjoy reading those. And if you have any technical issues, please let me know in that questions tab, and I'll do my best to get to you as quickly as I can. This is also where you can put your questions and comments for our presenter. All right, let me look over here. Who do we have today? I see Miami, Florida, Colorado, New Jersey, Tulsa, and all good in Pennsylvania. All right, thank you for letting me know that everything is working. This webinar qualifies for one CPE credit. You earn that credit by staying logged in for 50 minutes and answering the poll questions. There will be four polls and during full credit, you need to answer at least three of them. I wanted to let you know that we're recording today's webinar and the archive along with your credit will be available in your CPA Academy account within 24 hours. And if you have to log out and log back in for any reason, the webinar software will keep track of your time. Last but not least, we recommend that you download today's presentation materials, which can be found in the control panels handouts tab. Now that we're all set, let's welcome our presenter. Tom, the floor is all yours. Thank you, Autumn. Thank you very much. And thank you to everyone out there for joining today. Um, I'm Tom Porterfield. I'm a CPA. I'm also a certified franchise executive and I'm a national account executive with Docket and AI powered accounting automation software. Uh, prior to uh, being with Docket, uh, I did have a, a firm that was focused on outsourced accounting solutions for uh, franchise is one of our major target markets. And I think a lot of you out there are from uh, uh, public accounting, uh, there may be some people in the industry. And hey, the things that we're going to talk about today will apply whether you're in industry, if you're going through month in close, the things that you will start seeing as it relates to AI and how AI can be utilized to improve your month in close process, you know, apply for both public accounting and for. Uh, those people that are handling that month in close in private industry. So again, thank you for joining me today. Um, let's just take a look at the topics we're going to cover. So this is our agenda today. You know, I'll just basically summarize this. Hey, what is AI? We hear it. We see it everywhere we go today, right? And, you know, month end is always a time of pressure in uh in the accounting process so let's see how we can use ai to to hopefully make that process a little bit better and uh, we'll talk about some of the key benefits and and we'll also visit some real world case studies on some companies that we've worked with and then we'll talk about just kind of an overall a, a, a large roadmap for how you might go about um, you know investigating and implementing AI technology in your accounting process or your, your accounting pra uh, practice. So I'm going to move forward here and let's talk about just the general, the AI, um, you know, environment today when it relates to accounting. You know, it's kind of interesting. I'll, I'll, you know, just mention I was in Seattle and I was asked to speak and I started to think about what would the people in Seattle relate to? And I thought, well, the logging industry. So I did a little research in, in 1850 was kind of my, my starting time point for the logging industry. And over the course of time, since 1850, they've probably had about a, an eight, eight and a half to nine fold improvement in output versus employee in the logging industry. And that's a long time frame, you would say, Tom. And I would agree with you. And it's probably only in the last, you know, probably 50 years that they really saw a lot of, of big changes. And I think when it comes to the accounting profession and the accounting process today, uh, we don't have real good numbers like, like I was able to extract for logging. But um, I would say that the that accounting's 1850, you know, time frame, if you relate it to logging, it was probably 1970, right? When when we first saw uh, you know, computerized spreadsheets evolve. 
And um, really, even since that time, in the early 70s, I, I don't really believe we've seen significant, um, <clears throat> you know, we have had productivity improvements, certainly, but I don't know that we've had the, you know, eight or tenfold uh, type of improvement. And I think that that's maybe the promise that we see with AI technology. So we see AI really having a huge potential for the accounting field. And I think it's at a moment where we really need it. Uh, so in the environment today, we're accountants, right? And we've been taught to be, you know, to have that healthy skepticism. So, you know, in the environment today, we see fear and skepticism. Some people are, you know, very skeptical of uh, AI technology. Other people are very fearful of it. It's going to take my job. And I don't think that we should look at it that way. I think that it will, you know, certainly change jobs in the accounting field. But I do not believe we should be fearful of it. I think it's something that we need to embrace. We need to learn about and we need to see how we can effectively utilize it to really transform the way we do business as accountants and the way we help people do business. Um, you know, there's certainly a growing adoption of uh, the AI technologies, but, um, you know, and it's it's growing. But again, it's a very, a very, very low level of adoption rate at this moment. Uh, relative to its its potential in accounting. Um, and I think today's just accounting environment in general, you know, whether you're in industry, whether you're in public accounting, the pool of, of qualified accounting talent we know in the, especially in the U.S., is certainly tight. Uh, you know, it's a difficult uh, market if you're trying to hire good uh, talent. So I think AI also offers the potential to supplement um, the talent pool and help us as we try to, to fill that gap that we have in terms of demand versus the accounting talent that are out there. And, you know, just in reality, you know, just being realistic about where we're at today in the environment, AI still, you know, there's still a, a, a human oversight element to AI technology as it relates to accounting today. Um, let's talk about the technology, right? So we are in the very early stage. I mean, even though AI has been around several years now, it's really in the last 12 to 18 months that we've heard so much about it. And, um, we're just at the very early stage, the early stage of infancy with AI technology as it relates to accounting. Um, you know, today, AI is good at reading information, extracting information. We can use it to ba uh, transact basic accounting transactions really without many problems at all. Um, you know, it's a combination of precision and generative AI. Precision AI is that, you know, kind of the repetitive part of it. The generative AI is, is you know, being able to use AI to make those decisions. So that's kind of where the technology is today. But what's the outlook for using accounting uh, using AI in the accounting process and accounting automation. Well, you know, certainly, you know, the outlook is that it will handle more uh, daily processing of accounting transactions and, and with higher accuracy, you know, uh, the more that AI is around, the better it is going to be in, in terms of accuracy. Um, the ability, um, you know, it will have the ability not only to make basic decisions, really, but it'll it'll probably take on even more complex problems as we look at the accounting and finance area. So that's um, that's my overview. Uh, there's certainly probably other commentary and other other points of view out there, but that's my overview of what I see in the accounting field as it relates to AI today. And uh, Hey, I know that everyone is here to get CPE credit because I, I have to get CPE credit too if I want to keep my, my CPA credential. And so, uh, Autumn, I think we're ready to launch our first poll at this moment. Sure. Let me go ahead and get that launched here. All right. You should be able to see that on your screen. As a reminder, there will be four polls during the presentation and need to answer at least three of them to earn full credit. However, I do suggest answering all four just to be sure. And this first poll is asking you, on average, how many days after, after month end does it take for you to close the books for a monthly accounting client? And we'll give it about another 30 seconds or so here.
Again, this is poll number one out of four. All right, Tom, so the majority so far with 51% are saying between four and 10 days, 20% one to three, 15% 11 to 15, followed by closely 14% uh, with over 15 days. Back to you. Okay, great. Yeah, so it sounds like a pretty good um, you know, dispersion there. Um, it'd be interesting if you um, if you answered over 15 days, I'd, I, I would you know ask you, Put in the chat, just say uh, 15 days may be caused by or due to maybe, you know, what drives a longer closing period for you today uh, might be of interest. So if you might want to chat, uh, put that in the chat. I'll try to take a look at it here. Um, I do have a little information about month in close in, in terms of the time frame. Uh, we looked at a uh, study, looked at some of the benchmarks, and generally the time frame is that five to 10 day. And I think that's consistent with what we saw in our poll. Is that right, Autumn? It was that, that yes. range, that four to 10 day, I think was the majority there. And uh, there's a uh, Ventana research uh, had a uh, 2022 survey about uh, the typical month in close, and, and they came back with it should. It, it should take between three and six business days. And, uh, you know, certainly factors that influence that are the complexity of the accounting, uh, the size of the team, size of the organization, and then the level of automation and in, in, uh, organization. And uh, we found that companies that uh, utilize automation have we and have well-organized, uh, you know, processes can significantly reduce that closing time. So um, appreciate your participation in the poll there. I didn't see anyone. Let me go back here and look in the chat public. Uh, yeah, I didn't see anyone, uh, you know, say why, why a long close, what was causing their long closing period. But anyway, uh, let's move on to our next uh, section here. And that is um, the, um, you know, some of the differences between the, uh, traditional close or the, um, you know, modern month end close. And when we look at it, Hey, we're all accountants, right? We love, uh, you know, checklists and spreadsheets. Uh, that's the environment that we thrive in. And, um, you know, a lot of what we know in the tra traditional close is focused on sequential tasks, maybe some simultaneous, um, but a lot of sequential task in those process, especially when you're working with a checklist uh, type approach. Um, and hey, again, we are accountants. Um, I told uh, you know Christine, who works with with me the other day, uh, that we're all procrastinators as accountants. And I think you know deadlines deadlines exist to make us get things done as accountants. Hopefully not. Hopefully things are getting better, but uh, there's definitely a little procrastination in, in the field of accounting. Um, you know, so we don't have to wait till the month end to, to actually start that process. Um, and certainly in the traditional close, exceptions are identified, you know, a lot of times late in that month end process. And it requires a lot of effort, you know, maybe creates a little chaos. Um, and I'll, I'll speak a little bit about that as well. but. Um, you know, the short time frames, you know, if we wait, if we delay things, um, it really creates a lot of chaos and it puts a lot of pressure on us to uh, fix and resolve those issues. And, you know, with relate, you know, uh, in, in relation to that, you know, I think the closing process, you know, when we, when we do see chaos, that's when we see employees to that maybe have dissatisfaction and everything. So as a leader, as a manager, we should really be thinking about the things that do create chaos in our organizations uh, because that, that can be stressful for an employee. And we really want to, to help uh, avoid those stresses and chaos. Um, and you know, anytime you've got something, I would just say, you know, look at it and think about how could we make this better uh, for our employees, for our team members. So. When we look at that um, modern month in close, um, you know, we see fewer spreadsheets involved and more automated workflows. Um, you know, it doesn't mean that the checklist, uh, we, we, we don't have 
you know, checklist, but the checklist are really going to be in a different form. It's going to be more of an automated deal um, where, you know, we're prompted for certain things and, um, and the, the workflow kind of controls how the process, uh, you know, uh, proceeds through the month in close. Uh, we also see AI doing a lot of continuous reconciliation uh, throughout the month as we transact processes. And, you know, what I would say is think about how you could build an AI um, technology into your, your cadence of daily, weekly task. And, you know, where can AI help, help in those daily tasks so that the, um, the month end task become of higher value, right? We don't spend a, a lot of time on exceptions in there. Um, but when it comes to AI, we can use AI to, to notify us and identify those um, exceptions before the month end. So we can spend time chasing down if we have to chase down information before it becomes a critical time point. And then um, we really feel that AI is uh, at a point where it can actually start helping us with uh, suggesting and uh, calculating some of the adjustments that uh, are needed for the adjusting entries that are in the closing process. So that's kind of a contrast between where we've been at traditionally, historically, and where we see the modern month in close um, taking us. Um, and I look at it, I'm sure each of you guys have your own way of looking at the month in close. But I really break it down into kind of four four areas. Uh, those things that are pre-closing, those things that are the initial closing, final, and then the analysis and insights of the um, of the closing process. So when we look at those four stages, uh, you know, traditionally, the um, you know the the pre-closing has been focused on processing transactions right what we're doing daily weekly throughout the month leading up to that month in close um we may be putting time in but uh, but you know quality may be the secondary thing that we're looking at uh, it's more about getting it done getting it done quickly and then worrying about the quality of the transaction later and what we see with the modern close using AI is really more a focus on the exceptions throughout the, the transaction period, throughout the accounting period, and then utilizing AI to do soft reconciliation so that we can be and essentially reconciling accounts throughout the entire month before we get to month end. And what we really you know, see the benefit there is less time with higher quality by using AI in the uh, transaction processing, the post pre-closing process. And then when we, when we get to the initial closing, you know, today, um, you know, it's focused on what are those exceptions you have to solve for, you know, what are, you know, the things that you have to resolve to complete that close. And, you know, if you're in the public accounting, you know, here's where you really run a risk and that's the risk of putting a lot of time into a job that you didn't expect. This is where you will overrun a budget. This is where you will overrun a planned time in a project uh, because you're you're now in a time crunch, uh, you know, during this initial uh, closing process. So where we see the modern close being is again doing that soft reconciliation uh, throughout the month, and then <clears throat> the monthly the 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 final reconciliation really becomes more of a formality. Uh, we want to use AI assistance in, in reconciling that balance sheet, tying in and tying it out, and then maybe even doing some preliminary calculations or taking a preliminary look at what we, what our expectations should be for the p &L. Um, and we really want to drive the risk in terms of public accounting projects, the, the lower, the risk of those overruns in the project by leveraging the AI technology. So, um, then that next stage, the final closing, you know, the final tie out. Traditionally, we're doing the final tie out of the balance sheet, PL, looking at our ratios. Hopefully, no surprises, right? Because we don't want to have to go back in steps, um, you know, at that point. Uh, in the modern close, we're really trying to use the AI insights at this point. We're, we're finalizing that reporting, and hopefully, it's less time involved in better depth, better quality of information. 
and then the final step that I have here is analysis and insights. And, you know, you know, traditionally we're drafting the reports, you know, we may be writing commentary as it relates to what happened, you know, uh, you know, for the, the uh, performance of the company. And we may be hurried to meet a deadline or to advise that client in <clears throat> with the modern close, we're looking for AI to help us draft that report. We're as an uh, accountant, we really want to be the advisor <clears throat> in the uh, process at this point, and we want to add value. We want to be ahead of deadlines, and <clears throat> we want to be able to provide our client or our management, our leadership team with better advice. So um, that's uh, that's my take on the uh, four stages there of the close: uh, modern versus traditional. So I think we're at uh, poll number two, Autumn, if you wouldn't mind going ahead and, re and uh, releasing that. I'm going to take a drink of water. Sure. Let me get that open here. Okay. Poll number two is live on your screen. What tools do you use for performing month end close? And we'll give you about a minute to answer that question. And Tom, if you want to look in that Q&A, there were some comments that came in there for you. Okay. I will do that. One. Looks like we're getting good responses there, too. Q&A. I am, I guess, let's see. Do I need to be at the bottom or at the top of the Q&A? At uh, the top of the Q&A. I right gotcha. Now. Okay. Yeah, I see it there. Let's see. And then while you're looking at that, I'll let you know the majority with 63% have set a checklist with the Excel spreadsheet and then a 15% with checks and balances and then pretty much a tie between it's in their head, project management tools and other which they might be putting in the Q&A for you. Yeah. So I was uh, pretty much right on with the Excel uh, in the checklist, right? Yes. <laughs> Okay, um, I am going. I'm looking here in the Q and A. So you said in the Q and A, and I have. Some, oh, here, answer. I unanswered. Chat is disabled. Uh, well, maybe that's not it. I, I'm sorry, uh, Autumn. I'm not seeing the ones. That's okay. It's the Q and the Q and A, and then the new. I'll read them out to you. Um, someone says they use a few of them. Uh, we have live flow, Google Sheets, financial, financial sense, uh, let's see, mainly Excel, backline, Oracle, Excel with the balance sheet, Keeper app. I'm there right now. Yeah, I see that. That's good. Yeah, a lot of, lot of different technologies. Oracle, uh, it, <laughs> it won't let me click. I, I don't think that's an app. I, um, let's see. Yeah. A lot of, lot of different responses there. Okay. Good, good information. There's a lot of, a uh, lot of technology coming into play in the month in close area. So I'm going to move along and uh, talk about some key areas for AI driven automation. We've kind of touched on this a little bit. Uh, I'll add a little bit more commentary, but you know, the, again, thinking about a cadence for your accounting process, those daily, weekly tasks, you know, we, we believe that you can incorporate AI into that processing, that matching and reconciling throughout the month, journal entry processing. And uh, here's where I think it can really help. And that's detecting missing or unmatched or out of expectation transaction as they're occurring or maybe even ratios. So for example, let's say you had everything really streamlined in an accounting process for maybe a quick serve restaurant and you had a target of let's say 24% for your food cost. That may not be realistic today, but let's say it's 24%. That's what uh, we were always try striving for in some of my QSR groups. Um, and all of a sudden it pops up and it's uh, 28 or 32 or something like that. And if you know you've got reliable feeds coming in and the numbers you know are right, AI should be tripping that to us right away and saying, hey, you got to look at this. You may find out maybe something's been double reported. Hopefully not. 
we may find out we just, you know, we have some adjustments we need to make. But uh, anyway, being alerted to those things earlier in the process, I think is of high value. And I think AI can play a role in doing that. Um, when it comes to monthly tasks, really, we want to leverage AI so that at the end of the month, we have ready, what I would say is ready to close books. You know, we are just ready to make it more of a formality in the closing process and then focus on adding that value, monitoring compliance and looking ahead. And, you know, I thought about this as I was putting this together um, on the, um, on, on, you know, <clears throat> compliance. You know, what if one of the last steps of your month in close after you finalize the numbers, what if you use, could use AI to, you know, go ahead and calculate your debt to covenant ratios for you? Um, you know, that would be a great application of AI technology. Uh, another one would be every month as you close, you have your numbers now, right? Uh, could we utilize AI as part of the month in close to forecast out another 12 months? Uh, could we let AI look at that data as part of the month in close and also be helping us with forecasting and planning? You know, I think those are those are some very intriguing you know, questions and to see how that we might incorporate AI going forward. Um, so some areas of uh, the balance sheet, you know, we're already using AI to do continuous reconciliation. Um, you know, certainly the bank and cash accounts, credit cards, accounts payable, accounts receivable. Um, anyone like to deal with intercompany, um, you know, uh, balances, intercompany accounts? Hey, if we can utilize AI to manage and help us better reconcile intercompany accounts, that's a great application of it right there. And then maybe uh, utilizing AI to, uh, you know, do a reconciliation of the uh, payroll liabilities. And these are areas that we already see AI technology having a role in being able to do a continuous uh, reconciliation. Uh, you know, some things that we do is um, you know with between the receivables and I would say a revenue system, we're even looking at the um, you know the collection of credit card remittances and things and automating that process and reconciling it um, like um, you know um, on a daily basis using that AI and uh, uh, let's see Matt Matt really uh, he, he says like Interco. Uh, heck no, but crucial and painful. Yeah, it is. So if we could use AI to help out in that area, that'd be great, wouldn't it? Um, so appreciate the feedback there. Um, so let's uh, let's see what our next slide has in store for us. I think we're doing pretty good here on time. So I just kind of this is pretty pretty simple here, but I was thinking about you know some you know five different areas. If you think about time, right, the area of time. The result of using AI in that month in close should be a reduction in hours, you know, to close and reconcile the books. We're already starting to see that come into play and the benefit faster month in close. When it comes to quality, well, um, you know, improved accuracy, fewer errors by using AI and, uh, you know, result is better information, right? You have better information. Uh, you're not dealing with the error, fewer errors that you have to deal with. Uh, in terms of profitability, if you're a public accounting firm, you know, looking at better pro project management and, uh, you know, bottom line is better realization uh, on your on your project for your your uh, client for your, that month end part. And then scalability. You know, I think about scalability. I love processes. I wasn't always that way. I was the guy that created chaos, guys, by the way. My wife said, you know, it's because you put good people around you that that can deal with the chaos and put systems in place. Over time, I really learned to appreciate processes because without a well-defined process, you don't have scalability. And, you know, I think AI can play a role in how we scale and we build scalable processes uh, by using AI to handle those, uh, those daily processing and give us the alerts. The, um, you know, the benefit is better utilization of the accounting firm talent, right? Um, to the extent that we can use AI. And then in terms of value, you know, less time, obviously, on processing and again, more time, better insights uh, from the accountants to the client or, you know, the accounting controller, you know, CFO to the other leadership team. If you're an internal industry, you know, an industry, private industry. 
So just some thoughts there on what the results and, and the benefits of utilizing AI are. So um, yeah, I think we're already to, uh, to poll number three. Uh, Autumn, if you wanna want to go ahead and release that and I'll look through here and see um, if there's anything in the chat or anything. Okay, poll number three is up and running. What is the most challenging aspect of the month in close process for your accounting team? Give you a second to read through those options. Again, this is poll number three out of four. Kind of evenly split so far. We'll give it another 20 seconds or so. I'll read out the results here in a moment. I want to get some more results in. All right. So the majority with 36% are saying meeting tight deadlines and time constraints. And then pretty much a tie, 26, 28% between reconciling accounts and coordinating with multiple departments. And then last place, 12% ensuring accuracy and compliance with accounting standards. Back to you. Thank you, Autumn. Yeah, I'm looking at those results uh, in the other screen here and just kind of looking. So, um, you know, it, it was pretty evenly distributed, uh, really there, the, the first three answers really taken the major or you know most of the the responses meeting the tight uh, deadlines and, and time constraints yeah so uh, hopefully you know we see hope with AI oh they went away but uh, uh, in my my uh, window there but uh, you know hopefully we see AI helping us with that tight deadline uh, and in really maybe shifting the whole process where we're doing that that initial close that uh, in much much earlier in the process by identifying exceptions uh, using AI. And uh, let's see, reconciliation, you know, we, we really have worked hard in our product to deliver a continuous reconciliation and hopefully solve that part of the process for a lot of our users so that, again, the, the reconciling really just kind of becomes a formality in the process because the AI has done most of the work throughout the month. Um, I would see coordinating with multiple departments. Uh, I could see that could really be a time, con you know, a consumer uh, in the month end process. And I think if you're on the public accounting side, really what what the you know, the answer really there is, you know, it's it's probably more coordinating with the client, right? The missing client information. So again, anytime we can utilize AI to prompt or notify the parties involved that we need the information so that we can proceed down this path, uh, you know, the better off we're going to be using AI. So um, I think we're going to move into maybe some uh, few case studies. Yeah, I think that's where we're at today. Um, and, you know, I just have some overview here, just kind of an abstract of uh, three different uh, case studies that we have worked with. And I'd love to, to also have you put in the chat, if you are using AI today, maybe, you know, just share a, um, share, you know, how you've used AI and what the benefit was from it. And I, I'll share that with, um, with our group today. So if you uh, if you want to just put that in the Q and A area, that would be great. If you have uh, some experience with AI as it relates to the month end closing process and what benefit you've gotten out of it, so let's talk about some real world case studies here. So first one, this is a small firm uh, in the Chicago area that uh, they work with a lot of Canvas uh, related operations and. The challenge that they had was uh, related to revenue, the revenue reconciliation. So, and I would think, you know, it's um, 
I, you know, I, I guess that's a regu it's kind of a weird environment, I guess, for that type of business, right? In one way, it's highly regulated. And then one way it's kind of like, is it re regulated? I mean, it is regulated, but the accounting is like completely different, right? In the many cases. And it's also dealing with a lot of cash, right? Uh, so there's a lot of things different and unique about that industry. I haven't dealt with it, uh, with that industry myself, but I could, I could see where there's some really unique, uh, you know, issues and problems there. And, um, you know, God bless the people that have figured out how to manage through that. But uh, revenue recognition. So in this case, they were doing some uh, manual, they were doing a lot of manual revenue reconciliations and it um, was handled at the month end for their clients. So that was a big challenge for them. You know, the, the issue they were dealing with it, delayed revenue reporting and insights. You know, a lot of KPIs are driven based off of revenue, right? Um, so if you don't have your revenue number, it's really hard to, to have some of the K KPIs that you can utilize in your operations to, uh, to better manage and, uh, and, you know, improve the operations if you're a manager in a, in a company. Um, so with an AI powered uh, solution, this firm saved several hours a uh, month specifically on that revenue reconciliation process. Um, you know, they were able to provide their clients with daily revenue. So they went from, uh, you know, a situation where they labor intensive reporting it monthly, it was delaying things to where they're able to report it daily. Um, and they are using that to, to also, you know, work with cash flow reporting and uh, they've uh, automated that process and they're getting faster and more accurate month in close as a result. So you think about that was a big hurdle for them, a big obstacle and AI has helped them uh, automate that process and be able to deliver better information in a faster time period for their uh, clients. So uh, let me go to the next uh, case study that we have. And uh, this is uh, case study two, a similar size firm uh, in California. And, uh, you know, no, no real uh, specialties, I don't think, in terms of uh, niches that they work with. But uh, the challenges that they had were fragmented technology stacks uh, across their clients uh, and manual bookkeeping and data entry. They used a lot of spreadsheets and uh, I think that's project management tools, uh, PM tools, project management tools to handle the daily task. Yes. And tracking of the client communications. And, uh, they, you know, as most of us have, have uh, experienced in our lifetime and our profession, lots of time chasing client information, you know, a lot and leads to delayed, delayed month in. You know, isn't it just, I mean, it's just so frustrating whenever you're waiting on that one bit of information to finalize that close of the books. So hopefully AI can help us uh, avoid those situations. But in this case with the, this, this firm uh, implementing an AI powered solution, they were able to save 12 hours a month in manual bookkeeping tasks, um, including chasing down clients for, for documents and communication. They, uh, they leveraged the AI for handling bank and credit card reconciliations. And um, the result is a uh, faster and more accurate month in close. And, um, you know, as a result, you know, they're able to better advise their, their clients because they're able to, to uh, have a better month in close, more accurate, faster. So that's a, another case study that we've seen. And let's move on to the third one. This is a little different. This is uh, this is going to be, you know, from an industry experience. So, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, co-working. Co-working's become quite popular. And, um, you know, especially the way things have happened uh, post-COVID and everything and, and the way, you know, uh, uh, workforces are dispersed uh, these days. So this is a firm that I know is scaling and growing a co-working environment. And they have about 11, uh, well, uh, depending on, you know, at the time, over the time that, uh, that we're aware of this company, they've, they've been from 11 to 50 em 
and 50 employees, um, you know, and they, they do co-working. Um, they have multiple entities. And uh, the big issue that they were dealing with was multi-location reporting and metrics for their board of directors. Um, and the base accounting software they had required exporting, um, you know, financials to uh, do the consolidation process. So there's a lot of risk in that too. If you're thinking about, if you do find one, you know, if you, you think you're ready to export, right. And you find some, an adjustment that needs to take place, you kind of almost have to start back at square one in terms of the consolidated reporting, whenever you have something like that happen. Um, and it was very labor intensive for them and the reporting process was you know prone for, to errors high risk of errors um and uh you know probably one of the reasons why it was labor intensive right because they were trying to you know mitigate for errors but at the same time it being a labor intensive process uh you know is prone to errors so with ai powered solution uh what we see is a more efficient accurate month-end uh, reconciliation process. The consolidating reporting is uh, is part of the solution that they're working with, and you know the result is they are able to meet reporting deadlines uh, and have better information, better insights for their board. And I think it's very important because you know I would you know expect that this company is, is growing with some type of, you know, desired uh, exit maybe in the future. And, you know, that information is so important for a company that is scaling and, and has a growth plan and, you know, maybe some, some, you know, uh, some liquidity event, uh, you know, planned in the future. So important for them to meet their goals and get to, uh, to their target of that liquidity event. So, um, Let's see where we're at. I think we've got a couple more slides here. So I um, think maybe we're ready for our, yeah. Let's talk about implementing implementing AI solutions uh, for month in close. So, and I would say this applies to any uh, type of technology that you're looking at for your company, for your firm, any type of, uh, of technology, how you should probably approach the evaluation and implementation process for that. And if you don't mind, I'm just going to pause and take another drink of water. So I, I continue to have my voice. Okay. Thank you. Um, so in implementing the AI solutions for month end, if you're looking for a solution, you know, first, um, I would scope the project, right? You know, define, you know, what, what are the processes and opportunities that you're looking to incorporate AI into? And, um, you know, understand what the risk, identify potential risk in that process, understand what they are. And here's the one that I think is really important. Well, I think they're all important, but uh, really having a goal set, a goal and an objective, you know, something in mind and make sure it's realistic too. You may adjust it as you go through the evaluation process, but, you know, for example, we want to reduce, um, well, let's say this, we want to reduce our month in close from, um, you know, 10 days to six, right? That's measurable. Uh, it would sound like a smart, uh, smart goal to me. And, uh, you know, set that as your goal, your objective as the project, you know, uh, part of the project here. And then have a well-defined decision process whenever you go to evaluate technology. Um, you know, get a methodology for going through. It's probably a checklist, right? We, we use them all the time. Um, but a decision process for that evaluation. What are the, you know, understand. I'm going to move over to the next one, you know, the AI technology box. But understand what criteria you're going to use for evaluating the solution that you're looking at. Um, and then I would do a, um, an inventory of what solutions are available out there that address the specific issues you're, you're trying to solve with AI. Uh, and don't be surprised, right? If you do that search, if you look at the landscape today and you, you get a list of solutions that are out there, don't be surprised if next week, you go and you do that same search and you find, you know, two or three new names 
that are in that same search um, of that technology, that particular technology you're looking for. Um, it's just changing so much with AI technology. Gather that information, have a way of ranking, you know, the uh, potential apps that you're looking at, the potential AI technologies. And then, uh, the, you know, key considerations, things that you've got to look at too is how does this technology, this AI technology, how does this work or integrate with my existing technology stack? You know, look at that cost and investment, not only in time in terms of, of dollar outlay, right? Because there's there's a dollar outlay, but there's, you know, the, the time element of it often kind of gets swept under the rug. We don't think about how much time we're investing in, in a, a process or implementing a new technology. And I think that's very important. And then I, I kind of go back to risk again. I think a key consideration here are, you know, what are the risks involved in implementing this technology? And, um, you know, what, uh, how will we mitigate, how will we manage that risk? And, um, and you know, what will we do in, re in response to a risk whenever something pops up in the, in the process? So when it comes to implement, implementing, you know, if you are a decision maker in the AI, um, you know, accounting technology process, selection process, you may not be the champion. In fact, in most cases, you probably shouldn't be the champion. You probably ought to have someone else that's a champion. And you got to be thinking about when you bring that champion in, in, into the process. I mean, they're probably involved in it, you know, in the process, but um, in the selection process. But uh, and when it comes to the implementation, you really have to have a champion. The decision maker often is someone that they have maybe a managing partner or maybe someone that's a practice lead of a, a CAS or a practice. They probably don't have the time, but they, they probably have someone in their organization that may be better suited and um, are able to serve as the champion. I think that's very important. And then change management. I think this is an important thing. You know, we talked a bit about it a little bit in that first slide when I talked about the current environment and, and I talked about, you know, fear and skepticism, right? And you're going to have people that are fearful. You're going to have people that are skeptical on your team when it comes to new technology, whether it's AI driven or not. Right. But I think the awareness of uh, people and being able to um, acknowledge that and also manage, um, you know, people through fears and skepticism with technology. And then, you know, have a way of monitoring, reporting, how are you going to improve it? If you see something that's not quite working the way, how are you going to improve that implementation process? And then when it comes to having it implemented and you're going to ready to hand it off to operations, who's going to take ownership? Is that champion the owner or is that champion transferring ownership of the technology to others in your organization. And again, continue to monitor those results. Remember, we defined what were the goals and objectives were up here. Well, now let's see, let's make sure we're hitting those goals and objectives, those results. And again, what improvements we've implemented it, what improvements can we make in how we utilize that AI technology and what additional applications are out there? I mean, AI is evolving every day. I talked about the idea of maybe incorporating a forecast uh, in your monthly month in closing process using AI to maybe help you with the forecast. So that would be another example of uh, additional applications there. So I think we're at a point now, uh, Autumn, I think I'm going to change this and we're going to go to our next poll question maybe. Yes. Okay. Sure. I will launch that fourth poll here. If you missed one for any reason, make sure to cast your vote. Which of the following areas of AI automation are most important to your firm and clients? Go ahead and cast your vote. Again, this is our fourth and final poll. And if you do have any questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A. We might have some time to get to those. All right, let's see, 39% are leading so far with analysis and insights. 
followed by 33% with reconciliation and month end closing, 14% revenue, 10% accounts payable, 6% exception management. Back to you. Yeah, thank you, Autumn. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, I, I, I think that's probably in line with what I would expect on the on the results there. And we've got great attendance, by the way. I think it's 519 responses is what I show. That's great. Um, you've been a great uh, crowd today, I think. I haven't seen you, but I think you're, you're a good looking bunch. I would say that. And um, you've been very, um, very engaging as well in the questions. So I at this point, we've got, um, uh, time for questions. And uh, I also have uh, Sugum uh, Pandey, our a, um, chief technology officer and co-founder at Docket with me for those tough questions. So I'm going to look here and see if we've got any questions. And I don't see anything right now. So, you know, if you've got a question, please uh, go ahead and post it there and we'll do our best to answer it and get the uh, get you a response. Oh, let's see. Maybe I do see some questions. There's one uh, at the top there from Robert. Do you see that one? I do. How are these AI solutions developed and are there off the shelf available in the marketplace for uh, purchase. Um, so, you know, our AI solution really uh, kind of was developed, you know, starting with uh, with Sugum, who's here on the call. Um, there are some, you know, specific AI, um, you know, off the shelf software, uh, if you will, that are probably more for, um, well, you know, Kind of best of breed, you know, specific purpose software. I'd say with Docket, we incorporate AI, but we incorporate in the daily accounting process, which also leads to the month in close. Um, that's uh, that's how our approach to it is using it in a daily, uh, you know, cadence. Uh, Sugum, I don't know. Do you want to you know want to add anything to that? How they're developed, how the AI is developed. I know we have a lot of developers that work for us that uh, handle it at your direction. Okay, well, maybe Sugum's not uh, able to answer there. So I'm gonna look and see, uh, maybe can, let's see. There's some good feedback in here too. So let's see. Um, main hesitancy is to engage with, is not knowing the longevity of the newly emerging companies. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of uh, technology companies out there every day. You know, I think I'd make hey. sure. Go ahead. Oh, is Sugum? Sorry, it was uh, some technical difficulties. Yeah, just to add to your previous point there, um, we do have in our uh, R&D team, which helps build uh, the AI solutions. Our, uh, we have some models which are proprietary, but essentially the, the value they provide is um, on the cloud. Um, providing faster rec categorization, automatic categorization matching, and ultimately that reconciliation of the balance for the bank and credit cards. They can be, uh, they are used by businesses and accounting firms for, for their clients, and um, they, they are on the cloud available uh, to be deployed on applications like QuickBooks Online. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Carol Adams uh, asks, are there user friendly to U.S. customers with international accounting needs too? And, um, you know, at uh, at present, um, you know, you'll find a mix. I think when you look at best of breed, there are a lot of best of breed technologies that maybe do one specific thing that can handle some international things. Um, you know, I, I would say that in most cases, you're probably dealing with U.S. currency in a lot of cases, and maybe, um, you know, uh, you know, certainly the potential that international accounting, uh, you know, will enter into this AI, you know, kind of a mesh up with uh, with what we know as AI in the U.S. today in our accounting product. But I think it is somewhat limited right now as it relates to international accounting. Would you agree, Sugum? Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
and you know even at uh, docket uh, we don't yet support international currency uh -huh. but um, down the line yes we would be opening this up okay even for international subsidiaries yeah yeah hey and i like the feedback there from catherine she says uh you know to to maybe incorporate our an actual ai reconciliation into the presentation and that's great feedback and that's something that we can do certainly next time that we we go through this uh so good feedback i appreciate that we'll do that definitely um seeing if there's any others here um let's see Yeah, and I'm just, you know, I think that's that's it for the questions at this point. So um, I guess, uh, you know, speak now or forever hold your peace if you've got, let's see, uh, Michael Kelly's jumped in here when he does reconciliations, the difficulty is getting to what is missing on the GL investigation is where where the time is used. How can AI assist in this? Is it in uh, iterative where it follows you? and then begins to hone into prior issues to move forward. Yeah, certainly getting to that point where it can, um, can you know, look for those things that are, um, you know, are, are missing that are not there unmatched, you know, for some reason. I mean, like, you know, a, a simple case would be, you know, if you had a transaction that hit the, the ledger that maybe the supporting documentation hadn't hit. I mean, that technology is definitely there. I think the case would come into, into play. I mean, maybe there's there's something that just doesn't hit the accounting process. Uh, can the AI, you know, uh, sense that it should be there, that something, you know, um, hasn't hit the ledger that needs to? And Sugum, you may have some some thought there, but I think that we we do see AI getting to the point where it can kind of predict maybe where something should have been and it's not there. It's not it's expected, but not present. Yeah, absolutely. I think a majority of the work that we see uh, towards the month end goes in detecting where to look, um, du duplicate transactions, missing transactions in the GL. Um, all of these are very time consuming exercises, even finding, you know, like uncleared checks or any deposits which are not yet cleared our ai is able to bring that out into a uh, it has already prepared that um, that uh, checklist if you will so you can just click into it and see exactly where those items are and sign off with confidence that's where ai helps in in that last leg yeah that's great yeah and there's some other uh you know uh i, I won't go through there's there are a few more questions, you know, real, you know, some that are very specific. We'll try to answer those. We'll try to respond to you directly on those. And I appreciate all the feedback here and everything. Some great suggestions, by the way. I love the uh, incorporating the actual live uh, demonstration of the AI reconciliation. Uh, Sugum, would you like to say anything before we wrap up? Thank you, Tom. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, yeah, no, I mean, thank you for attending. This has been great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Autumn. Thank you to CPA Academy. We appreciate it. Um, you know, just uh, a little uh, information about us. Again, I am with Docket. Uh, you can learn more about AI with that QR code there. And uh, we appreciate you attending today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Pleasure having you with us. I'll go ahead and remind everyone that the handouts, the archive of the webinar and your credit will be available in your CPA Academy account within 24 hours. And if you look in your email inbox, you will find the evaluation link for this webinar. All the questions that were asked today will be forwarded in a full report to our presenters as well. And yes, I've seen some lovely comments coming in. Thank you so much for those. And thanks again, Tom, for your great content and to our members for your participation. Please check the schedule on our website for additional information. And we hope to see you on a future webinar. Have a great day, everyone.